A very good evening to you, uh, wherever you may be, in Abuja, in Sokot, in uh, Yobe, Sokoto, Were, Enugu, Ekiti, Lagos, Ebado, United Kingdom, United States of America, wherever you have joined us from. I uh, want to thank you for finding time to join us, and we are happy that um, you are desirous of making the effort to achieve the good life that you deserve and which your family also deserves. We'll do our best to support you on this journey, uh, hoping that you are going to go beyond merely expecting magic to realizing that our faith must be allowed to mix with our right actions for us to achieve our hard desires. This event is meant to help you to get update on your desire to move from here to the United Kingdom to pick up jobs that are meant for teachers. And the reason why we are doing this is because we're a community that believes that education is the bedrock of development. We believe in the power that education has to help people to migrate socially. Uh, it has been proven beyond every reasonable doubt that it remains the most potent tool for overcoming poverty, not just for individuals and families, but also for countries, for societies. All the countries in the world that have moved forward, have moved forward first by recognizing the indispensable place of good quality education for the transformation of society. Nigeria and most countries in Africa are struggling because we haven't given education its rightful place. Those of you who are teachers, you are very privileged people. The work you do is wonderful and a work that should be adequately remunerated and you deserve very you know, important recognition in society. Unfortunately, for those of you who are teaching in Nigeria, that doesn't seem to have been your experience. Um, in the local communities where you live, you are probably not among the people who are highly respected because we live in a very materialistic society in Nigeria where money seems to make all the difference. But we're going to change that and that's the business the Nigerian teachers community have been set up to do. Uh, and we're going to do it with your cooperation, with your involvement. I'm Dr. Peter Ogudoro. I lead the Nigerian teachers community. It's a community of about half a million members as of today. And I've had the privilege to lead that community. Um, I founded it in 2016, and we have been growing in leaps and bounds. Uh, in the year 2021, we won the Facebook Community Accelerator Award. And that came because Facebook took a look at what we have been doing for quite some time, and they saw the need to support us via that recognition to do more for society, starting with Nigerian teachers and moving to global levels. More awards are coming. If you stay with us and join us, especially next Sunday, we are likely to hear one big award that is coming to Ross as a teacher's community. We have become the most vibrant teacher's community in the world. If you are not one of us yet, the simple thing to do is to join us on the Facebook platform. And of course, the link that takes you there uh, should be in the chat box uh, if you have a look at it. Uh, Facebook.com slash groups slash Nigerian teachers. And you are in. It's available to you for free, no matter how uh, your state in life. Some parents are also uh, people we like to welcome to our community because they help us to understand uh, what improvements we need to make uh, so that we can teach our children better. And that helps us in our evaluations. And of course, um, we have also become a platform that is known for generosity. So parents who don't have the money to recruit uh, private teachers to assist them with homework, a good number of our members are generous enough to come in and work with such parents. And those teachers as, are doing that as a form of community service, which is good for them. Because for those of them who are desiring to go to the UK, uh, those kinds of services are very well um, recognized and rewarded in the UK and other parts of the world where you 
devote a fraction of your time every day to serving other people for free, which we ourselves who are your servants on the platform of Nigerian teachers have been doing for many years now. And so a lot of the things we do, we do for free because we believe that we can't keep waiting for government to do everything. Otherwise, we are likely to wait forever. And so it's our singular honor and privilege to be assisting in the way we are doing now. Uh, in the course of the about 30 minutes, I will interact with you today. Uh, I'll be sharing with you information that will enable you to understand better what you are excited about, which is the opportunity to go to the United Kingdom to pick up teaching jobs. And uh, also to help you to recognize the things you need to pay attention to and not just to believe that merely having a desire will just transform you into somebody who is, has become a teacher in the UK. It takes effort to get into the UK. And even after you have arrived there, it will take you effort, rigorous and systematic actions to be able to get the kind of job you deserve and you desire, and then maintain your job so that you can continue to earn the kind of income that is driving you out of Nigeria. And of course, it's not just an income that you should be going to the United Kingdom for. You should also be going to learn from colleagues and leaders, education leaders who will have a lot to offer you. I've had the privilege to have benefited from awesome education provided by UK institutions. I, I did both masters in um, communication for innovation and development and the PhD in education with emphasis on career management, product diffusion, and that to change. I did a master of writing. And that took me to several other institutions across the world, including University of Cambridge, University of Sheffield, Johannes Kepler University in Austria. I was also in, in Sweden and several other places. And so uh, UK is very empowering. If you get in there, your life gets transformed almost the first day you arrive there. And it's not just about what UK will give you. Uh, it's also about what several other nationals who have come into the UK to come and work or come to school will give you. Because it's a country that once you have gone in there, just like the United States of America, even if you don't have money to go to other countries, you more or less have traveled to those other countries. Uh, as a student at the University of Reading, I know that I had um, students from about 150 other countries. And so there's hardly any country that matters in the world that I didn't have a course made for. And that is a very empowering experience. And so if you also go into the UK to teach, you are going to have a similar opportunity, a similar privilege. So a lot of the people who will be working in the same school with you will come, will be people who come from other countries. And so you have Spanish, you have the, the Greeks, you have um, Guyanians, you have Nigerians, fellow Nigerians who are likely to be working in the same space with you. And you are, when it comes to STEM subjects, you are likely to find people from China, from Singapore, from South Korea. And you are also likely to have people from Canada and United States of America who have come sometimes on sabbatical to come and have a look at how education is practiced in the UK so that they can learn some things and also assist teachers in the UK to see if they can make some changes in their own methodology. And one of uh, the countries you look forward to uh, you know, interacting with via their citizens in the UK will be Finland. Uh, the Finnish people also come into the UK to teach. And at the moment, uh, especially at um, uh, kindergarten, uh, primary and secondary school levels, they seem to be offering the world the best model. So even if you don't have the money to go to the Scandinavian region where you have Norway, uh, uh, Sweden, Iceland, Denmark and Finland, going to the UK may be a good uh, starting point because you are likely to meet them in classrooms and in school. So one of the reasons why I will encourage you to travel is because while you are in the UK teaching, you also get the opportunity to probably enroll in their universities for further education. So if you already have a master's, you can enroll from, for PhD. Uh, if you don't have a master's, uh, you can enroll for a master's degree. 
and from there you can start climbing and you know having a full-time job will definitely permit you the opportunity to also enroll in the university to do a part-time program to keep upgrading yourself so the opportunity for high quality continuous professional development is there and i encourage you to take full advantage of it well however uh, would like to uh, ensure that you are getting the right information. I, I, I read a lot of things on the internet, uh, most of it provided by young people who are just trying to make money by posting things on the internet and you know getting uh, page views. But education is a very important thing. Career management is so critical that we can't allow our own members, members of the Nigerian teachers community to just depend on information flying around on the internet and provided by charlatans, by amateurs, people who haven't studied career management, who also haven't had the opportunity to study in the UK themselves, or haven't done research, especially at doctoral level, to understand how the education space in the UK works. So we are not going to help give you information that is unrealistic. Uh, I have emphasized almost from the from day one we started these briefings that uh, yes, indeed. As from um, early February, the UK will be happy to welcome teachers from Nigeria, but it is not every teacher they will welcome. And so uh, ignore what charlatans are telling you on the internet. Uh, it's not every teacher that the UK will welcome. UK will welcome teachers who have the knowledge, the skills and the values that they are looking for. And so they have areas that they have prioritized. The current prime minister, is very clear with respect to his interest in mathematics, for example. So he is interested in people who are very good in mathematics because uh, given his own family background and level of education and accomplishment, he knows that mathematics is critical for the growth and sustainability of good quality life for society. And so he is prioritizing that area, but that's not the only area they are interested in. But if you have a bachelor's degree in mathematics, that makes your case significantly easier than the cases of um, several other people who may want to get in there. But all of us are definitely not going, not going to be mathematicians. So they will still be able to get into the UK and we'll explain how you can get in there if you are not a mathematician. If you are a physicist, you have BSc in physics or you have Bachelor of Education in physics, or you are a chemist, you have BSc in chemistry, and uh, you probably have gone to do postgraduate diploma in, in education, and you have the certification given by Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria. Your case is significantly going to be easier compared to the cases of people who studied the arts and maybe you don't have education credentials. And so that's something we need to pay attention to. And I have every reason to believe that if you haven't uh, seen it already, you are likely to see, uh, uh, by way of information emerging from Department for Education, which is the UK's you know, equivalent of Ministry of Education in Nigeria. They are going to make further clarifications that will make it very obvious that so many people who are excited about traveling out of the country when they haven't paid attention to study in the kind of disciplines that the UK may be interested in, are not likely to get in there at the time they want. But if you are not in the STEM area, you still have a very good chance of going to the UK because not everybody is going to be a single subject special. So we don't all have to specialize in chemistry, in physics, in mathematics, in biology. But if you have already specialized in those areas, your case is easy, provided you have education background and you also have obtained the TRCN. So when they open uh, the platform for people to start making applications to gain the credential called the qualified teacher status, those people should be able to do uh, pre present their credentials and within uh, some time get feedback that says they have become uh, qualified you know, teachers and they can pick up jobs in the UK. Thereafter, they can start applying for jobs. Now, for uh, people who are in languages, when I say languages, yes, it's good if you teach English language, but you should know that English language is the language of the people of England, the place where you're going to teach. So uh, they are not likely to uh, lack sufficient number of people who are at your own level in the use of English language. And so 
there is something you need to do to up your game if you, are, you have a language background. But the languages that will be that will make you significantly somebody who is in high demand in the UK will be if, for example, you learn German in school, you have Bachelor of Education in, in German or just a BA in German, or you, you, you learn French, you have BA in French or Bachelor of Education in French, or you learn Russian or likely Mandarin or Arabic. Those languages are important to the UK because they are very strategic in the way they look at life. They have realized through experience that everybody in the world seems to be, you know, falling in love with English language. We're all becoming as proficient as the owners of the language are in the use of English language. And that is um, in addition to our own mother tongue. So if you are Yoruba, you speak English fluently, you also have Yoruba. That is an advantage you have over an Englishman. And it's something you should be proud of. If you are, you know, Guyanian, there, there are indigenous languages in Ghana. And the average English person would be happy to learn the languages that the people of Ghana speak, which the people in the UK are not able to speak because they don't come from Ghana. And more importantly, when that language is an international language, um, like you have you know, French, you have Mandarin, uh, you have Spanish, those languages are very much in high demand globally. And there are also languages that are used by the United Nations for official transactions. So they want all their children to be able to learn those languages. So if you speak German and you can teach it, if you speak Spanish and you can teach it, if you speak Mandarin and you can teach it, if you speak French and you can teach it, you are at a very big advantage. So you can easily migrate so long as you are able to prove that you are not only able to, to speak it, you are also going to be able to teach it. And so that is where education background becomes you know, very relevant. And that, again, while we're on that, uh, makes it very necessary for us to make some clarifications. As a career practitioner and researcher globally, I've come to see that Africans don't seem to know the value of, you know, allowing their children to study things that don't look popular in local environments. For example, German, you know, Mandarin, you know, French, and those kinds of languages. They are, they are languages that will make you multimillionaire if you know how to use them, you know, career-wise. Unfortunately, um, we get distracted most of the time. Everybody wants to become a medical doctor, an engineer, an accountant, and the pharmacist. But there are areas where people are not looking into that are, are, are very much in high demand in the US, in Canada, in the United Kingdom, in France, and several other parts of the advanced societies, including uh, even in China, that is an that has already emerged as a, as a su superpower, even politically as well as socially. They are climbing economically, the, number, the biggest, uh, second biggest economy in the world. You can't ignore them. They too need are people in STEM, they also need people who can teach languages. But in the case of China, there's a significant difference there because China will be happy to welcome you if you teach English language and you teach it well. So you don't stay here and struggle. Um, the Koreans will also be happy to welcome you to come and teach English in, in South Korea. Um, similar opportunities exist in Singapore, in Malaysia, and in several other parts of Europe, of, of, of Asia, and even Europe. So learning how to teach English language to people who don't have it as their mother tongue is something that uh, you can prioritize. And you don't have to have studied English language you know, as, as, as uh, an undergraduate program to aspire to do this. You might have a degree in uh, political science and show interest in teaching English as, as, as uh, a second language to people um, who don't have it as their first language. And the way to do that is to, for example, relate to British Council and several other agencies around the world who can provide you opportunities to learn how to teach English language. So it, it, you don't have to have a BA in English because there are programs you can do to become a competent teacher of English language to people who don't have it as their first language. So uh, as we interact with you uh, in the course of the coming weeks, we'll continue to provide you more information and links to places where you can learn English language, even if you didn't study it at undergraduate level. And sometimes it doesn't take more than six months to acquire the skills to be able to travel out of Nigeria. And sometimes you don't even need to travel out of Nigeria. As a side hustle, you can set up 
platforms on the internet and use this to make money. And I'm going to get that to that point very, very, very shortly. And so that clarification has been made. Um, but if you are not in these areas that are in very high demand, the way to get into the UK, for example, you did early childhood education. Um, you did, um, you know, Bachelor of Education in, in political science, in government, in, um, in commerce, in economics, in accounting. You still have a good chance. The only thing you have to recognize is that you have to exercise a little patience and invest time and money to acquire credentials that will make you become somebody who will operate as if you, you studied from the beginning in the United Kingdom. And so uh, instead of qualified teacher status, you should be looking for international qualified teacher status. That means that you may not have money to travel to the UK to do a first degree, where you spend money to pay your tuition, also spend money to pick up accommodation and pay for food and pay for transportation in the UK. You can stay in Nigeria and enroll with one of the accredited universities that can teach you how to teach. And so you stay here and work with accredited schools, primary schools, secondary schools in Nigeria. And over a period of between 36 weeks and one year, you acquire certification that will make you get recognized as somebody who you know, studied in the UK, even though you stayed in Nigeria and acquired all the credentials. So you'll be recognized as somebody who whose credential comes from universities in the UK. And that makes it easy for you. Once you get that, then you can start applying for job because it automatically gives you qualified teacher status. Once you're able to go through the uh, international qualified teacher status program successfully with one of the schools accredited to do that. We'll provide you links in the coming weeks on how you can enroll with that, with, uh, for that with um, the relevant uh, institutions that are accredited uh, to be able to provide those programs. And so you can do it. Don't sit down there and say, I, bet, uh, I haven't got the money. How much is my salary? There's hardly anybody in the world who has succeeded and who started from a position of advantage. You know, most people will always have one, uh, you know, something that they have to struggle with. In spite of that, they will overcome that. They are resilient, they are creative and innovative. Uh, those of us who are coming across to you now, as successful people, we, we are not always at this level. Uh, as I have mentioned to people who have listened to me at different fora, I, I have been in the education space for 40 years. And then I have, yes, earned a PhD in the UK, but I tell you, my parents didn't pay the fee for me to go to the UK to study. They didn't sponsor me beyond, first, beyond the school certificate because that was the best they could offer not because they didn't see the value in giving me education beyond that level, but because they didn't have the means. And so you can help yourself. Don't sit down there and write yourself off. And that's the whole essence of our community. We want to help you with ideas on how you can raise funds to get the kind of education you need to give yourself access to good quality life. And if you are married and you have children, support your spouse and your children to also get good quality education not just in Nigeria, but also in the advanced societies, because it's very obvious that we are not doing very well uh, in terms of the quality of education we provide to the average Nigerian child. It's worse at the university. Some secondary schools are even doing significantly better in terms of you know, the resources they provide for teachers to do their work. But I tell you, globally, it has become a major challenge you know, to people who have studied in Nigerian universities. Uh, where the technology is not there, especially those who studied STEM courses. They don't, um, most of the time, have access to good quality technology that will make them globally competitive. So when they get abroad, they struggle for uh, a while before they can begin to uh, become familiar with the technology that is used in those societies to run um, schools and run technologies that are available in factories so that they can earn the kind of money they have always desired to earn. And so I encourage you to get realistic. Stop listening to charlatans who don't understand what the UK is talking about. When people tell you it doesn't matter, once you have a BA, you can get into the UK as a lie. That's not how it works. So be realistic. Start mobilizing resources that will enable you to approach UK institutions to uh, do the programs that they offer so that they will no longer be looking at you as somebody who is coming with only a, a Nigerian you know, credential. But if you already have a bachelor's degree in any of the STEM areas I have, as I have already mentioned, or you have 
uh, a B.Ed. In a STEM area, or you have done a post postgraduate diploma or certificate, and you have TRCN after you have majored in a STEM area. Yes, you probably may not have to worry about going to do another program in the UK before you can approach UK schools to work for them after you have applied successfully for qualified teacher status. And I like to emphasize again that qualified teacher status you are going to get is not a job offer. It is only a clearance that says UK institutions can accept you as, as an employee, but it remains your responsibility to acquire other skills that will enable you to now, you know, get selected to appear for interview and to eventually get employed to teach in UK schools. So when you hear, it doesn't matter, you don't need to write IELTS. I don't encourage you to believe that. Because UK institutions understand what IELTS means, because IELTS is conducted by British Council around the world. So once you present it, they are no longer in doubt as to your proficiency in the use of English language. So it makes life easy for you. And one of the reasons why the average Nigerian doesn't want to write such tests, whether it's IELTS or Duolingo or, or, or TOEFL, is they need to run away from the cost implications. But you see, the good things in life are not most of the time available only to people who don't want to spend money. They, they are available most of the time to people who want to also make a little sacrifice to get, to get what they want. And so pay attention to that and embrace that reality. I will encourage you to get what other people do not have. This is a competition, it's a race. And that's the truth of the matter. So it's a competition. So if everybody arrives there with only O-level certificate in English language, and maybe you're studying all your life in English, including um, the training you did to earn, earn your degree in, in Nigeria University. And that's what every other person is saying. And they need one out of the 100 people who have applied. You don't need to go to the moon to come back to recognize that the person who presents them eight points over nine in IELTS is the person who wins, who wins the race. And that's what I encourage you to do. And because money is a, is, is a big issue, um, as a community, Nigerian teachers community, we are trying to see what we can do to help you to go through some intensive programs, for example, a seven day intensive program, or you do uh, maybe like three weekends on Saturdays and Sundays, um, you know, consecutively and speedily uh, to be able to acquire the skills you need. And I'm, I'm speaking with those who have studied English language in the UK and the PhD in it, and they seem favorably disposed to make this contribution to the Nigerian teachers. And we are going to let you know. So where it's supposed to cost you as much as, you know, let's say it's supposed to cost you a million, you, that is not going to cost you a million. If it's supposed to cost you 150,000, it's not going to cost you 150,000. We are working to ensure that you'll be able to spend only the kind of money you can afford. So I will send you links uh, in the next two days so that you can sign up for the opportunity to, uh, you know, come into the class and get assisted by people who have the skills to help you to acquire the knowledge and the skills you need to be able to write a test and score seven points, eight points that will make you more competitive when you are competing for jobs available in the UK. So that we are going to do that for you. So stop being afraid, but it remains your responsibility to pay a little token. And of course, British Council will not conduct the exam for free. You have to pay for it because it costs them money to bring in resource persons who will evaluate you. And so start thinking about that possibility. We'll help you with all the links and further ideas that will make it easy for you uh, to leverage uh, the opportunity we're going to provide you to get what you need to become you know, more competitive. So those clarifications are very necessary. Now, for those of you who are ready now to make successful applications, you have to recognize that after you have gained your qualified teacher status, then you have to apply for jobs. You need to learn how to respond to questions that people will ask you when you appear as an interviewee. Um, and a prospective employee of a UK school. You'll be required to write personal statements. From what I have experienced as a career advisor, the average Nigerian teacher, even average Nigerian school counselor, doesn't know how to prepare a personal, personal statements, their motivation statement. So we are also trying to see what we can do uh, using Zoom and um, uh, physical platforms to help you to write appropriate personal statements that will make your story very compelling 
so that when you go for interview or when you even submit your applications and your CV, uh, you'll be able to get through um, to the next stage where you'll be invited to appear for interview. Because if your CV is not properly you know, pre prepared, if you prepare it exactly the way you have always prepared your CV for a Nigerian uh, employer, you are not likely to be able to get into a UK environment as an employee. So we'll do that for you. So um, uh, remain a member of the platform you belong to so that when we send up this, you, you key into the opportunities that we, we, we provide. And so you need to process some documents after you have secured the job. And those documents will include proving that you don't have criminal records. That may cost you a little amount of money to do. We are not into those kinds of things. The police and other security agencies are going to be the ones to help you to do that. But we can point you to where the, the resources are and the agencies that can do that for you. And we use our international network to also assist you to process your documents with ease. And then you need to process your visa. And if you're taking your family along, and there are several other bits of things that will cost you money. And um, you need to face that reality that transiting from Nigeria into the UK is not going to be a bed of roses. Yeah, there will be tons on the way, but it's in overcoming the challenges and the obstacles that you will eventually find yourself rejoicing and thanking God for the opportunity to travel to the UK to go and teach because it's a very um, honorable effort to make. And don't listen to Nigerians who tell you, hey, you want to Jaguar? Why does everybody want to Jaguar? Uh, people are suffering in the UK. It's not everybody that is suffering in the UK. I trained in the UK, I work in the UK. I have never had one minute of regret training in the UK and working in the UK. Because uh, for every Nigerian teacher, I was talking with a teacher this, aft in, this afternoon, and I had her say she has a Bachelor of Education and she works for a government you know, school. Uh, in one of the states and she says her salary is 50,000. 50,000 is, is about 50, 50 pounds. It's, and that's, that is money some people used to eat lunch in the UK. Uh, so if you are able to move to the UK, uh, the salary you will earn in a year will be about 30 million naira. And so even if you make up your mind to save only 10% of that, that's a significant amount of money that you can put away and after some time, you can buy a house. You don't have to start building from the scratch. After five years, you just look back and say, I want to buy a house in Mowe or in uh, somewhere in Aja or in Abiyokuta, in Potakot, in Abuja, wherever you live, you should be able to buy a house after teaching for about five years if you know how to be efficient as a user of resources available to you. And so it's uh, an honorable ambition. Ignore all the, all the people who are telling you it's difficult to teach UK children. Yes, that's why you have to go to school to learn how to teach. Teaching is not, a, 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 is, is not an ordinary job. It's not a job for people who haven't gone to school to acquire the skills to, to do it. I have been a teacher for about 40 years and I have enjoyed every moment I have spent in the classroom. And I tell you, it's not a job that every person is, is able to do. Most of the time I teach with our scripts. I've done that for close to 40 years and people marvel as to how am I able to do that? It's because apart from having it as, as my gift and my calling, I have also gone to school to learn how to teach. So I, uh, sometimes I see debates on our platform as to uh, is teaching, a, a, is it, is it um, are teachers born or they are made? Teachers are both born and made. So I have to help you to answer that question now, just in case your prospective employer in the UK will ask you that question tomorrow. So it's not enough to be gifted as a teacher. You also have to go to school to learn how to teach, which is going to be very important to UK employer. And they will want to know how much effort you have put into learning how to teach and how much more effort you're going to put, in, put into continuing to learn how to teach. Because you teaching in the UK is not a matter of, I already have a BA. They want you to become a lifelong learner because the world is changing every day. And that's very important. So. Uh, you will also need money for your flight ticket. You will need money to secure accommodation in the UK. They teach the employer in the UK is not going to give you free accommodation. It's not going to give you a flight ticket to come into the UK. It's your responsibility to start strategizing with respect to how to raise the funds that will enable you to, mig to migrate to the UK, including uh, doing the uh, international qualified teacher uh, status you know, program, if that is the route that is most appropriate for you. So don't drop your ambition to travel. Um, there are teaching opportunities across the world, including the UK, and it's um, over a period of a year or two, you can get in there. And that clarification is also important. So many people are getting the impression that once we get to 1st of February, 
everybody must come now and uh, submit their credentials. And uh, after that day, the door is closed. It's a lie. Even in the next five years, people are still going to be able to apply to get to do to to get um, qualified teacher status, to get um, uh, international qualified you know teacher status after having done the program. And so it's not a one-off thing. Uh, whenever you wake up, it's probably going to be your own morning, as an African proverb says it. So that clarification is very important so that you don't begin to get too anxious and too worried. But you must have a plan that you have to implement immediately because the world is not going to continue to wait for you because the times will continue to change. At the beginning of this excitement, everybody thought, yes, once February comes, every teacher will be able to get into the UK. Um, but from what we're telling you now, that is not how it's going to work. It's going to be available to the people who have a plan and who are making sacrifices in terms of returning to school, doing the IELTS program, um, probably learning some other skills that the average person who has a degree in mathematics does not have. Because most of the time, what we have discovered through research is that the people who are wizards in mathematics are generally not uh, better than the people who study the English language. So when it comes to communication, they struggle, especially with respect to rules of grammar. And so if you want to be an excellent you know, teacher of mathematics and be able to get into the UK to teach, which is uh, in terms of going through the hurdles of getting into um, a school to, to work as a teacher. The smart thing to do is to hone your language skill, become a proficient user of English language so that when you go through interview, you'll be able to convince them that you are not only a wizard in mathematics, you are also somebody who can effectively communicate mathematical principles to children you are going to teach in the UK. That will make your case easy. So when we come with the link that will give you access to uh, the platform for you to uh, train and write the IELTS, grab it with your two hands. Don't let anybody discourage you to that, you know, along those lines, because those people are charlatans who have no knowledge about how the UK system works. In theory, you will be told it's not necessary, but it's a competition. If 100 people are competing and they are going to take only one, why are you listening to people who are telling you to, to go and approach the prospective employer uh, with, you know, qualifications that are not outstanding when you have the opportunity and the capacity, especially in terms of intellectual um, capacity to learn. If you have that capacity, why don't you use it to acquire the credential, which will make it much easier for you to travel? Because staying in Nigeria and complaining about Nigerian government, about politicians, is not going to change the story of, of your family. Uh, one of the very important things I learned in the UK as a doctoral researcher, it was the concept of agency. A lot of times we just sit down here and complain that Africa and, maybe and our pastor, our, our husband, our, our wife, our children, our parents. The truth is that we can do something about what other people are not doing for us. And all we need to do is to get the right knowledge, which is what you have made an effort to get now. So I congratulate you because it takes determination to move forward for you to spend time, you know, participating in this conversation this evening and listening to the explanations I'm giving. So the next step is for you to make a full use of that. One of the things I will encourage you to do is to get credentials that will make you an outstanding leader. Because when you get into the UK, they are looking for people who know how to play in teams, who know how to communicate effectively, who know how to lead. Because they are going to be, uh, they are going to put you in groups where there will be projects that will help the school to render excellent services to the children that you are working for. And so they'll prefer people who have excellent communication skills, not ability to speak English, but learning about the meaning of empathy, you know, becoming culturally intelligent, having, uh, you know, social awareness, having commercial awareness, and being capable of relating with other people and ignoring their inadequacies, their idiosyncrasies, and working with them and focusing on their strengths rather than worrying about their uh, uh, limitations, their inadequacies, their weaknesses. That's the kind of thing you're going to find in the UK. UK people are generally very, very polite. They don't like you laughing at people who are struggling with things. In Nigeria, uh, it's acceptable for people to laugh at people when they don't know. In the UK, it's not acceptable for you to laugh at people who are not as lucky as you are. I see that a lot on the Nigerian teachers platform that we run, where we have about half a million teachers, where people come and complain all the time about people who are not able to write in, a, in good English and they think that every teacher must be able to write good English. That's not correct because not every teacher has gone to the, to the university to learn English. And so if you 
measured in Hausa or in Igbo in Yoruba. You are, we, are, we are not supposed to expect you to have the level of proficiency in the use of English that a major in English language has. Because the major in English language generally struggles with mathematics. So why are you laughing at a person who's, who is um, teaching mathematics but is not able to speak English the way you do when you don't even know up to 5% of what you know in mathematics? So those are some of the things you need to become you know, very familiar with. And they recognize those things in the UK, empathy you know, uh, and compassion, not just for um, yourself, but also for others. Compassion for children, empathy for, your, for children, and again, self-compassion. So you know when to stop worrying about others and stop paying attention to yourself because uh, the person who is there is not going to be in a position to help anyone solve any problem. So UK people will recognize that. They don't want you to come and walk the way you have been walking in Nigeria. You go to work every day. On Saturday, you go and to pray for the children and uh, clean things and sort out things. Sometimes on Sundays, people assemble somewhere. That's not how they work in the UK. Uh, they recognize that there's need for life, you know, work-life balance. And so uh, if you know what those things mean, that would be very, you know, helpful to you. And we are working with a business education council that offers um, a, a credential that will enable you to become aware of those things. And you will be able to get a professional diploma in public relations that which can use as uh, something that will add to what you're bringing to the table that will make it easy for UK schools to accept you. And that is something we are trying to do and bring to you at a cost that you can afford, knowing that you're a teacher. Our platform is meant to serve uh, teachers, uh, generally speaking, and we know that teachers don't earn a lot of money in Nigeria. So we'll continue to ensure that we negotiate with people providing services to ensure that those services are available to you at a cost that you can afford as a teacher. And so within the next one month to six weeks, uh, you should be able to get a credential that will prove that you're an excellent leader, you're an excellent communicator, you're an excellent team player, and there will be a credential you can acquire to make that you know, clear to every person who is willing to who is willing to employ you. And with those kinds of credentials, you will also be able to set up side hustles and make money from the internet uh, because a lot of money is there to be made as we speak. Unfortunately, the average Nigerian teacher hasn't acquired the skills to be able to operate at that level. So we want to change that. For those of you who have had the privilege to come to know us and you are taking advantage of the information we're providing you. So in the coming weeks, we are going to uh, empower you to learn how to you know, uh, produce uh, e-materials and show you the websites around the world where you can uh, use what you know to make money. Even before you travel out to go to the UK, you start making money from here uh, because it is very possible for you to stay in your one room apartment or your small classroom in your school and talk to people in, the, in, in, in America, in Canada, in Germany, in, in Hungary, and they will pay you good money for the services they're offering their children. And as a community, what we want to do for you is once we have given you access to acquire the skills you need to become globally competitive, and then um, if you have become a premium member of our community, which uh, takes only a token, uh, as of today is only 9,000 naira, it takes you to become a premium member, but that will give you access to resources from around the world, world millions of naira. So once you have become a premium member of our community, we will advertise your skills and services for free on our platform. Uh, that way, you'll be able to have access to uh, prospective employers in uh, Europe, North America, as in Canada and, and United States of America, Asia, um, even the Middle East and other parts of Africa, so that you can earn your money in dollars from around the world. Uh, those of you who attended the conference we had two days ago, uh, we, you remember we brought in uh, resource persons from the uh, University of Reading and from the Chartered College of Teaching in the UK, and they did emphasize the need for people aspiring to come into the UK to have uncommon skills. And those are the things we are going to give to you. Don't assume that the fact that you are a star in a Nigerian school automatically means that you are a star in a UK school. Their standards are significantly higher than the standards you are used to in Nigeria. And um, the fact that you don't seem to be able to meet those standards now does not mean that you cannot meet them. It just requires that you have to commit to learning and improving yourself, and you'll be able to get everything you need to be able to operate at that level. So we are going to give you access to that. So the smart thing to do is between now and Friday, if you are not yet a premium member of Nigerian Teachers, before 
the cost goes significantly higher. Please become a premium member because we are going to give you access to resources worth millions of Naira. And because the primary objective for um, what God has enabled us to set up as Nigerian teachers is not uh, to, to make money, but to give access to Nigerian teachers to wonderful resources available from around the world and international network that will make you enjoy life, you know, significantly better life than the one that you are seeing at the moment. So that is going to happen to you and just remain uh, with us and we'll continue to provide you um, the assistance that you need. So I'll, I'll send that links uh, hopefully by, by tomorrow. Uh, for those of you who already have the link for you to become a premium member, do it fast. If you missed the program we did on, Saturday, on, on Friday, two days ago, the International Teachers Conference because they didn't have money, we recorded it and we should be able to make it available to you. So if you pay for the conference, um, the recording should be available to you by Friday uh, uh, of this week that we have entered. But uh, if uh, you go beyond Friday, then uh, we might not be able to give you access to that. And that's also something that has come as a token to most of the people. I, the testimonies that have come as a result of participation in that conference, um, the, those testimonies make us very happy that we are making a very important contribution to the development of the education space, both in Nigeria and globally. Enjoy your week. Remember, please do work that delivers service. What much more than you are paid for. That is how, how to get the job that you desire. You desire and get the kind of money that you want to be paid. Bye-bye.